Hello guys and welcome back. I am Elf, Elf Deck Gaming, and today I'm going to be doing a little modification to a UPS. Uh, if you don't know our UPS, UPS means uninter uninterruptible power supply. Uh, they're commonly used for computers um, to keep the power on. This is a APC 280. It's an older model. It's metal. And it's got two sockets back here. I'm going to add an external battery mod to this. There's the bottom. And I'm also going to be adding a couple of switches. There's going to be this switch here, which is going to turn off the beeper element that I've already taken out of this unit. And the reason I took it out is because there really wasn't a way to turn it off easily when the power failed. So I'm going to be taking and making an option where I can just flip a switch, turn the beeper off, and also an external battery. So I got to get the original battery, not the original, but my replacement battery out of here by unscrewing these uh, screws here. Open this battery door. When I got this, it had a battery in it that was no good, and that's pretty much all it needed. Um. Sometimes you won't be as lucky. Usually, some of these go bad. They have other problems that go bad. All right, so it's got this 12-9 uh, type battery. This is a replacement battery. Now this, I think this particular battery came out of another UPS unit that the battery was good, but the UPS was bad. It was one of those power strip models. And this one... 12 bolts, and I think I'm going to say it's either 7 or 9 amp hours. So we're going to set this aside out of the way here. Moment. Let's yeah, see if I get this door off. I don't think that's going to come off just yet. So next I need the Phillips head screwdriver that I just had that has now escaped. I can use this electric uh, electric screwdriver for this. It's much faster but there's less control over the torque but since I'm on loose it doesn't really matter. I do have my drill with my stepping bit that I'm going to use to drill the I'm kind of debating if I'm going to put these switches on the side or the front. I don't know if the front can support all of them. I've got to spread this apart and lift the whole top off to expose the inerts. Let's put this over here. So it's only about 280 watts. And here's the transformer battery compartment. I should have enough room up here to do something. I'm not sure if I even can. I would like to at least put the beeper switch in. Here's our FETs. Sense adjust, I believe is what that would be. Float, oh, that's the battery float adjustment. On this side, here's our frequency. We should change the frequency. Um, voltage output. Transfer voltage. And the battery float. Okay, so that's that. The beeper when here in BZ1. Um, there is a fuse on board. You know, sometimes also when these fail, there's that fuse on board that you can check, and it's simply a blade fuse right here. And this intersects between the battery positive and the rest of the inverting circuit, charge circuit. If that fuse blows, your inverter will also not work. So it's not always a transformer or a FET problem. It could be the internal fuse, it could be the battery. 
you know, any number of those things. Okay, so external battery I can do. I know I can do it. Then for the actual switch to put in here, I think I can go into the front. Probably right in here. It looks like it's going to wind up being in a weird position either way I go because there is a cross member in there. I could cut that cross member out and just eliminate it all together. How would I... Hmm. So I think first thing we we'll do first is get the circuit board up and out because that's going to be in the way and I got to get a screwdriver down into this to get the metal plate off so I can then get the plug plate off. Kind of a weird arrangement going on here. There's the screwdriver here. Will that reach in there? Let's see if it gets out of the way. I think my camera is a little low. I've been meaning to get a, another stand rigged up where it's better secured and higher up. Just a little. I put a shelf in here, but that's way too high. Zoom on this thing sucks. It's digital zoom, and you know when you zoom in digitally, what happens? It starts looking like one of those weird PewDiePie videos where he zooms into his face and it's even more retarded than what he already is. Um, oof. Work that out. Just kind of working these spades off. I guess they're called spades. I can't remember. Because I need to get this circuit board released at least enough to get to get the tool down. And I might go. No, I can't reach it that way. I got to get the battery cage out. And I got to move the circuit board around to do that. To be able to get to the screw holding it. And it's still kind of sideways because this particular screwdriver is not exactly long enough. But that's okay. As long as I can get a bite on the screws. It'll be okay. I can get it out. Once I get the battery cage out of here, I'll be able to get the door and everything else off, and then I can just unscrew the front. It's probably going to be another one of the long videos, too. I like building that radio. It's probably going to look good on paper and when I go to doing it it's going to be a disaster and it's going to be requiring FEMA to come help right across from the worse than Puerto Rico no. anyway okay here comes the battery battery cage looks out that one won't come out. I want that one. Oh wow, that's longer than. Well, that's kind of dodgy of them. They put the crimp on. Whatever. That's kind of kind of shady of APC to do that. They put the the black uh, deal on. And it ran it through and then crimped it on, so now we're kind of married to this thing, tethering and banging around now. But that's okay. I can get my screwdriver in now. So I can unscrew the face. It's probably a good place for the electric screwdriver, but it is kind of angled. 
get more or less into that type of, type of spot. Product placement. <laughs> um, I'm going to have to unplug that. Almost. Over. I think that big switch in the front has a bad neon indicator on it, or it's going weak. I can't. I don't know if it's just weak. I think it's actually one of those green colored ones too, which is kind of cool. But it stays, doesn't move. Okay, so this is the business that we want right here. We'll uh, put this aside for now, just kind of over there. And the idea is to somewhere get this switch in here like that. I've only got one chance to drill this because if I screw this up at certain depth, <laughs> no, it's not certain death, but it is, uh, it will just be a screw up and I, well, I won't be able to repair it because the hole will be too big or well, whatever reason the face plate will be, it's, it's yellow too, so it gives you the idea how old this thing is. Um, so I need now. <coughs> I have this. And I'm thinking of going right in the middle, right above the eight. Plastic, you don't want to force it too hard. Yeah, all these shavings, geez. You don't want to force it in too hard because this is older plastic. Hmm. It could. It could very well split, crack, any number of things. How much more wrap is this going to be big enough? Like about a about a three quarter. Bigger. What is that? Is that gonna no oh, a little more show where I'm at? So maybe half inch be our magic number. Shavings are going to be everywhere by the time I'm done. It's upside down. Okay, now there's a little deal here on the side of this switch. It's like an index to hold it straight. And for that, it's pretty easy to, to remedy. I, th I think this is going to be easy. I, uh, where did I see it? Oh. This will straighten, make sure the switch is straight. Just an index channel. 
in here and I'm going to put in to make sure that this switch is going to be straight in when I push it in like so and lock it. Okay, so it's in. It's not going anywhere. It's not perfectly straight. I mean, I could make it more straight. Just widen the channel a little bit. <clears throat> Something like that. It's an index that you got to put in. Now it's straight. It's not moving, so so there's that. It's about as good as any. This will turn the beeper on and off. Now the front of this uh, deal this, has a bar right here. And of course if I go to put this back on, it's not going to want to go on because that bar is in the way. I've got kind of a remedy for that. I know it's a support, and I know what I'm going to do is kind of unethical, but I'm going to cut that bar off like that, and edges off of it. That feels good. That's good enough. It's not sharp anymore. I just took and kind of filed these down where they're not so sharp anymore. And now the front will go right on as advertised. Okay. Before moving on, I need to check the continuity to see which pins. Okay, it's currently sitting in the on position. So center should be. So it's the bottom and the top, uh, middle for on, and then that will be turn it deeper off. So we need these two pins. A piece of wire. Now I am going to put the beeper back on the circuit board and I am going to cut a trace and add a jumper or two to the switch. I know it probably sounds sacrilegious to be cutting traces on a circuit board, and, but whatever. This, if this breaks, it's no great loss. It's just a little minor backup supply that, that I use the power like a some LED lamps and stuff, power fails. It's no great loss, so. Okay, so those are the two. I just want to tent them, I don't want to seal them. Um, we got these two ends already done. Actually, I need to redo them because they're not long enough to get what I want to do here. Christ. What I want to do here is J-hook this onto the switch and then tighten it up there. I'm going to tin this first because 
be hard to all that smoke. <laughs> Fruit gnats in here again. Huh. Put out another fly trap. Those fruit gnats in here again. I don't have any fruit in here. That's the thing. I don't know where they're coming from. fell off my table. Wow. Something just slid off. I don't even know what it was. Whatever. Okay. This one. these to be secured on here. I don't want them to be just tacked on like some Chinese built solder thing. Okay. It should be good to go. Do I have any heat treat tubing now? <laughs> I don't think I do. One thing that I forgot to get when I was at this parts house was heat shrink tubing. You never think you need it until you need it. Do I have anything that can be used as a substitute that isn't obliterated? Possibly this stuff. Possibly this stuff. This some insulator off of an old multi-conductor cable, I guess, will work. Well, I mean, it is insulating, so it's not the thing to use, but when you don't have stuff because you get rushed and you don't have time to buy it or whatever, you use whatever you got on hand. It's not the first time I've used things like this. It, it works pretty well enough. I mean, it's it's not going to short. It's not going anywhere. So, okay. So now that is in there, it's sticking out way out, grossly out. What I want is for that to kind of run up. Off the board like that. But I need to put I need to get the screws back in first. Okay, getting the faceplate screws back in. This this may prove to be a little more difficult than advertised. But I should be able to manage. If I can just get them lined up right. Which that one's going to be a dick, I guess. It's not going to want to sit right. I want to <coughs> reiterate here on battery safety a little bit. What you do not want to do with these is use a car battery. Your typical car battery is not a sealed battery. I mean, you can use a car battery, but it's highly recommended that you use a car battery inside your home. 
especially if you have open flames, things creating sparks. Because car batteries, while they're charging, off gas hydrogen. Hydrogen, as we know, if you remember chemistry, is highly flammable. It's explosive if it's concentrated in an area. Um, now, not saying that it will happen, because even the little batteries in these will off-gas an amount of hydrogen, but nowhere near the same amount that a car battery off-gasses. A car battery also is a maintainable battery. It has the dent caps on it that maintain the water. Um, you know, battery acid is highly corrosive. You don't want a car battery sitting on the carpet in your house because if it ever leaks for any reason, you'll end up with holes in the carpet, um, you know, things like that. Not, not a fun time, in other words. Um, all I can say about car batteries is if you're going to use them, if you're hell-bent on using them, Use them safely. Keep them outside, you know, isolated area where they don't get too hot. And, but I mean, if you're doing that, then you probably got a bigger power supply system than this thing. <coughs> this is a little baby compared to. I've got a big one, you know, that I've got all my main computers and stuff. This is a baby compared to those. But even still. And SLA batteries vent. They vent. But they have a regulated venting mechanism built in. They have little rubber caps under plastic caps, safety caps. And safety clap caps are hot pressed on in the manufacturing. They're not meant to be taken off. Because once they're on, it hints the term sealed lead acid battery. They're not maintainable batteries. I know there are a number of videos on YouTube that where people take those batteries and rewater them. And yeah, you can do that. But once you open those batteries, you breach that seal on those batteries okay and once you breach that seal that pretty much uh that, that pretty much um starts off you know with the off gassing thing okay I had to go get my magnet, magnetize the screwdriver so I can put these screws back down in here. So I'm trying to get the battery box screwed back down. Why don't this go down? Jeez. I feel like that's cross threaded. Hmm. That, fuck, that feels frustrating. It may not even go in that cold. Might go back here, maybe. Still batteries, just be careful. If you're going to try and rewater those batteries, be very careful. And in my experience, sealed batteries, once they go dead, they're pretty much dead. They'll give you a false sense of success, and they may even charge up, you know, and uh, seem to function okay. Make no mistake, though, that is a genuine false sense of success because 
rewatering them, if you have a bad or shorted cell, it's going to try to re-energize that water. And it'll even show that it's got a capacity greater than what it already had. However, it'll never charge all the way. And once it tries, once it starts getting close to its actual capacity voltage, it'll start getting really hot. The battery will. That's never a good sign. When these batteries get hot, and since you've already cut the uh, seal, they're going to start off-gassing a lot more than they normally would. And they're off-gassing them, and they're off-gassing hydrogen along with steam from the water. So they're getting hot now. Now, they'll even bulge. You'll even have batteries. Uh, batteries that bulge are usually the ones that are still got their seals intact, developed a short so bad in the cell that they get hot, the plastic becomes malleable, and they start to flex and bulge. And, and you can probably imagine what kind of wonderments happen from there on out. Um, There's a number of things that can go down. Alright, so. One more in the circuit board. So we've got our switch wire run. Switch is mounted. Switch wire is run. Our buzzer goes here. And I'm going to cut... I'm going to figure out which one I'm going to have to cut here. Probably the one on the underside going to the transistor switch that it is connected to. So, we can't even see that, but that's right, right there. Oh, won't go too far. Don't go too far to the knife. Because cutting too much means bad things happen. So I'm just going to cut that trace right there. That my soldering iron needs to be sponged. My new tip hasn't come in yet. I'm kind of interested in where it's at. Okay, so that's that is running off to this pin on that transistor there. So, okay, where is the positive? Or does it matter? I don't think it matters with this. <coughs> Suck out solder from the hole. And then the process depositing more solder on it and what it needs. That's nice. Thanks for that. Switched back to the weller because it just gets hotter and works better than that other thing I had. Even with a shot tip, it's still a better iron.
Okay. Now, wire number one will go here, and wire two will go over here. I'll let that just lead, and I believe that would be the emitter. Oh, it might be the base. <coughs> Who knows? I'm at a point where I just don't care. As long as it, it's on there and it doesn't go anywhere, it will be good. What I do want here is more solder on this terminal. I want to tin that. Alright. And then... Modifications that make life a little easier and kind of nice. Okay. I have no choice but to tack those down. Okay, so that should. Turn our buzzer on and off whenever it goes into that mode. And I can test that real quick here. Simply by reconnecting the battery, plugging it in. I'll plug in this. And plug that. Plug that in. Buzzer's beeping. All right. Turn the switch off. And no more buzzer. Okay. No more beeper. All right. So the beeper mod is working. Let's see. I'll put it all back together now. Um... Oh yeah, I was going to do the uh, external battery. Whoa. Bumped the entire thing. Um, external battery. Let me see, where can I do this? I can probably poke it out of the back right here. I just, I don't know if this bit's even going to if this drill's going to have enough power to do this or not, we'll see. Man, that's... That's rough. Well, this is going to be rough. Definitely. Um... Hmm. Once it bites, it'll go pretty quick. Damn. This is hard and steel, my dad. It's not wanting to bite this. I'll be right back.